What's good? What's good? This is Kelby Cannon, publisher of Making the Magazine, founder of the membership, and we are live for IG Live exclusive interview with Jess Wayne. Hold on, wait. We got sound effects to get out. Yeah, <laughs> What's going on with you? Hey, grinding, man. Just trying to get ready for, I got some music coming out, so trying to get ready for that and actually trying to do a full rollout. Okay. Um, the first time I've ever done it where I'm like spending the time to have to promo it up to this point, it was like, I make it, I throw it on this just your kid, post about it and move along <laughs> and be in a spot where it's like this, this joint's like seven weeks out wow. and starting to like move, move accordingly. It, it, it's different. I, <laughs> it's so different, but it's good. Like, it's just, you know, it's like, it's a switch in like what I'm focusing on where for so long it was like, just make music, make music, make music. And now I'm trying to like make something amazing and then actually promo it well, as opposed to being like, I finished that song, I'll put it out there and I'm on to the next thing. Yeah. Um, I had somebody tell me recently, if you don't care about your music after you've put it out, then no one else will. Right. And so he's like, you're so quick to get to your next track. I got to get that thing out and you're letting that that piece of content you're losing all this content out there because you won't actually invest in it right and that that's an interesting thing um you just jump right into the meat of it like <laughs> hey, he didn't say his name where he's from how he grew up like, he just like listen <laughs> <laughs> and like and i was like i because i want to dive right in where but i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna pull it back Introduce yourself to the sure. people. <laughs> Listen, I think I did the same thing on stage. Is mm -hmm. like introduce yourself, and I was like, so, um, "What's up, everybody? I'm just Wayne. I'm an artist out of the Twin Cities in Minnesota. Um, so I rap, produce, overall creative." All right. So now, hmm, do I want to jump in where you were just at, or do I want to tell these people the story? of how we connected it first. It'll make sense if we go back. Okay. I don't remember what the phrase is. You know how the movie or the, the story starts at like the climax yeah. and then like seven days earlier. Like yeah. it's like, so yeah. I feel like we're about to do this. Yeah, we, we got the little, like we saw the end of the movie. Now. Yeah. Like, yeah. All right. So hold on, I want to make because it, it it looks it seemed like it cut out a little bit. Are you on Wi-Fi or are you on your data? It seems like the answer was data. Okay, <laughs> boom! Now we got it. We good to go now. Now you on Wi-Fi? I'm on Wi-Fi. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. So, um, so how did you first uh, discover making it? So, uh, an Instagram ad. So I was um, I was looking up like I. I was like, I need to start performing more because I was making a lot of music during the pandemic, like most people. And I was like, I need to get out and perform more. I was doing some different open mics, but I was like, I want to, you know, do something different. And I got booked to perform at a event in Vegas during the Super Bowl weekend. Okay. And I think I just found my way into the algorithm for the ad for like, do you want to perform in South by Southwest? And I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so what was wild was I hopped in and I like filled out a form, I signed up for a membership and I submitted to do the like paid mm -hmm. uh, performance. And I was like, all right, like this is it. And I like posted the whole thing on my Instagram and I was telling people like, hey, make sure you tag in them, let them know. And I think my timing was off or, or something. Or Honestly, it just might not have been the right song mm -hmm. or some, and some other people were selected and I was kind of bummed out. Like, okay, I thought that was my shot, but hey, there's some good information I'm getting from this membership. You know, I'll, I'll stick around in this. And then you posted about the uh, Media Matters brunch. Mm -hmm. And you're like, you know, if you have the budget for it. And I kind of looked at my whole, like, production budget for the rest of that year and was like, we might just need to go ahead and use this. Mm -hmm. That might be where we're at. And so luckily I had some people in my corner who were willing to um, also step in and help. And so I reached out to you. I had people tagging you like, like, this is who needs to be doing the brunch. And so we ended up having the conversation. 
conversation and it felt like for me that the way it all landed ended up being better for me because there was you know i needed to invest in that moment and i think the fact that i had to make such a significant investment and you know do it to the detriment of my pride a little bit like asking folks for help is not something i've ever been good at especially for my dream right really leaning into that moment um and having to make that significant investment and saying all right now this is do or die we got to go do this and it has to go well um i I think it landed the way it was supposed to and you know brunch ended up being fantastic but like just that moment of feeling that initial like i put myself out there for the for the free free and like also shout out to the folks who performed and got their stuff paid because they went out there and rocked and i made some great connections and friendships from from those folks and also i felt like the way it landed for me is i needed to be like making that type of investment in myself to go uh, down to austin in that way you know the interesting thing with um with this is like we've been doing this magazine for like 17 years and going on 18 years now and it's like it's so interesting that you say that is because having been an independent artist always try to carve out and 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 do things and create these opportunities for the people who don't have it and the the reality the people who invest the most get the most out of everything that we do because they take it seriously yeah. and they really utilize it like there are so many people who may get the membership just to try to win a performance or do something and right. then they don't post, they don't tune in, they don't open the emails. And it's like, but then the person who, who pays $2,500, $5,000 for the, the, the top tier memberships of marketing service actually shows up and, and utilizes it and starts making money and starts getting paid. So all of these different yeah. things. And, and so like when you say that, it just like kind of reaffirms that thing. For sure. And so like that's one of the things is like it's so many – doing this there are so many opportunities for us to do things and really really genuinely help artists and the the biggest problem that i found is the artist just not wanting to invest yeah and and it's like and 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 i get it to an extent um but it's like and so in that kind of wrestling with that trying to balance that create these opportunities but then it's like one of the things in reflection um, that we've like in the past year that I looked at a lot of the artists that, that won opportunities didn't maximize them. For sure. Yeah. And I, I, I think there's an element of it too, where in our first phone conversation, when we talked about the opportunity, I think we had a great connection around just like we're, we're adults who have like really important things happening around us. And so, I was right away like this is kind of my this is my pivot point like my whole background of this is corporate life and so like i'm trying to transition that into here and so i i want to make i'm going to take that same mentality that's allowed me to grow in that space over here and so immediately we kind of had this shared idea around like this, there's a business element of it like it's art obviously and i think there's one of the big things i'm focusing on this year is like leaning into not allowing myself to be like filtered down creatively simultaneously recognizing like this is business and so being able to have that mindset i think we clicked right away on on that reality and kind of were able to navigate accordingly because for me and i named this in our first conversation it was important that i developed a good working business partnership with you so that the creative could shine like i needed both of those i knew they had to go hand in hand and that was scary because up to that never done the business side musically it was always how do i create the dopest sound how do i you know have the best post and it was like how do i now say how do i make the best business decisions that will impact the art so they can go hand in hand and work accordingly yeah and 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 that's the thing for me like so when we do these things it's like so much room for us to to present people like so this is this was your first time in austin you're in south by Southwest. all right so and I think we talked about this a little bit on the phone. Like, so, so we're not an official South by Southwest right. event. And I, I make it very much clear for everybody because I think it's so many people who 
try to ride that wave and keep it quasi yeah. play in the gray yeah. space. And a lot of people spend a lot of money and get scammed and show up for events where there's nobody there. And it's like all of like with we have the biggest independent event on Sixth Street every year. Right. And it's like, and you, you can see just from the, the the amount of people that were there, but the quality of people, like yeah. the DJs, the media, the label execs. And we bring all those people in without um celebrities. Yeah. There are no celebrities on our flyers. There's no futures performing. Right. There's no right. it's right. It's a complete independent lineup that we curate so you and i have we talked about this mm -hmm. but um and i know we're gonna cover this a little bit but i end up getting connected and getting a distribution deal while out there in austin and how that happened was i met you at the hotel to pick up flights mm -hmm. and so, so i ubered over we meet and so you're like we're, you're talking me through the whole thing and i was like what is the best way to do this where like um, we're we're seeing the city. Like, how can I kill two birds with one stone? Really, three? Because I told you I was gonna make yeah. a video, and I hadn't. Yeah. But <laughs> having me video, I hadn't thought it yet. I wanted to make sure that we were getting as much content for around the city to be able to post about it after the fact. And I needed to make sure we were seeing the whole city so I could hand out flyers. So how do we kill all three of them birds with one stone? And so what we did was we just started setting up shop in different places. I'm performing parts of my song, people are gathering, I'm handing out flyers. So I'm, I'm like, I'm getting my shots, plus getting being able to hand out some flyers to the event. And that was one of the reps from Greater Than walked up on me while I was shooting in one of the spots and was like, are you an artist? And I was like, do I not have a ring light out here jumping up and down? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, um, but just in that moment, being being able to say like, here's the event I'm I'm going to, and they're like, we're here for South by Southwest, but we're gonna get connected with you because we love what we're hearing. And so, and one of the things that when I followed up with them, they said anybody who's willing to off the strip, right? Like we, we were back by the hotel, right? As like a dope spot, like off the strip, set up a camera, play their music, and go for it, and smile while they do it. They're like, we saw an energy in you that let us know that you were somebody we wanted to partner with. But all I was only in that spot in the first place because I had to show up to <laughs> to get them flyers from you to start handing them out. And so just that that next level of investment, it was like, once again, it was like it's scary. Yes. It is, it is because my art is mine. Like it is something. It's it's my baby, right? It's I I sit in here like at this desk with my keyboard and my headphones and all that, and I'm I'm cranking out these beats and I'm writing the lyrics. I'm doing all that. So then to like be in a space where, A, I wasn't at home anymore. You can't in Minneapolis, and I love my city, you can't just set up a ring light and start dancing around and people not look at you strange. Right. So I'd be like, hey, I'm not, a, I'm not in Kansas anymore, right? Austin's yeah. weird. <laughs> I had to lean into that weirdness. I had to put myself out there and also recognize that like, I'm gonna have to ask for something I've never asked for, which is like, will you come see me perform? Right. And, and that's my big thing why I, I i still do physical flyers every year because i want to give all of the artists i want to ensure that the artists have something that they can put in people's hand it's an icebreaker i go over like every artist i talk to them i give them hey this is how you pass yeah. them out this is what you say you yeah. make it about them you don't make it about you it's like genuinely caring and wanting that that's how we do the biggest event with no right. celebrities right. it's because we do it together yeah, And so all of you are out there with your flyers and talking to people and being personable. And, and so we, in addition to the industry and the DJs and there are fans and there are other artists and producers and creatives that you run into at these other events mm -hmm. and it's the talk of the strip. And so that's the thing. And, and once again, it's, it's like between that and then like, I figured out how to get my QR code as my phone background. So it was like, we got, it, it was a business trip. We're out here. We have the objective of getting people to come to the show. And then I got to go out there and perform and to the best of my ability because not only are they going to either enjoy the show, but at least they could connect with me on my socials. They're going to see my performance after the fact. Like, we got to figure out all the different ways to run this thing into the ground. And, like, how can I turn one event into hundreds of pieces of content? Right. Like, that 
that was really sitting on the forefront of my mind. So much so that when it came to actually performing, I was like, it felt secondary. Right. And so this is my thing. <laughs> I like, so artists, I've for over a decade, I've encouraged artists to come to Austin during South by Southwest. Whether or not you go to the conference, because I know the conference is expensive. It's one of those things that a lot of people can't afford. And it's like, so just to travel alone, like may eat up the budget that would have been there for a badge right. for some right. people. Right. And it's like, but at least being there on the strip, in the atmosphere, talking to people, you're going to navigate and you're going to create content. You're going to create connections. Yeah. You're going to have all of these things. And it's beneficial outside of the conference. That's why South by Southwest is something bigger than South by Southwest yeah. proper. Yeah. So you, you have the official South by Southwest, which is the conference and the event and stuff. But there is this cultural thing that is South by Southwest, right. which everyone refers to. And people say, it's so many people who go to South by Southwest who've never had a badge. Right. They just go to Austin during this time of the month in March. And it's like a, it's like homecoming yeah. for the music industry. Yeah. And so like, that's what it is. And I, I think if for us, we try to put on the show that's the big game. Yeah. For all the, for all all the, the independents and like come in here and for you to be able to like what we did with you as being a sponsor for the, the brunch, like create these, these experiences yeah. that allow people to more deeply connect with the artist. Yeah. And I'm going to be real with you. When we were in that space and the graphic went up and I like saw myself on the graphic, I, I about cried. <laughs> <laughs> like it was just this wild moment where it felt like I took a huge step in the right direction and could finally say like I'm I am an artist like like I I knew it but it was like just there were all these little inflection points that happened during that week that were that was reinforcing you no know, yes you are you know, yes you are and then that that was kind of the icing on the cake to be like okay we're here we yeah. did and that's a huge thing for me personally. And so like the way that we do our events, the way that we do the promotion, the way that we introduce the artists, the everything that I do, I, I, I have a standard where you have to be, be treated like you're number seven on billboard. Mm -hmm. Like, like, like I, I personally don't like, Hey, we got who, who net we did this DJ got your music. Like that type yeah. of, like, there's no care. Like, yo, when you're introduced your name, your, like when the graphic yeah. goes up, your yeah. pictures up there, big, yeah. your, your full name, your yeah. Instagram. So they could type it in the QR code to go straight to your page. Yeah. Like all of that's up there while we're talking and going yeah. through the music. You had listened to the music. And so like, we could talk about the tracks because you knew them. And even to the point that like, we're standing up there and it's like, what track should we do first? And like, I think we should do the Lulu. And I was like, I agree. I think, that, you know, like, <laughs> we, could, we could do that. We could go back and forth in that space. And like, if I'm like, I went in, into that. So I came out of the experience in Vegas thinking maybe I should just produce. Like maybe I should stop rapping because I don't know that what is hot right now is what I'm doing. Like I could see, like I stuck out like a sore thumb. It's like everybody's sounding like Future and Amigo. And there's, there's like no disrespect no, no. to those. I, listen, like, I get it. Like, and that's, I'm very passionate about this, especially in this space where I feel like, I feel like what we try to do is create space for everybody. If you notice, on the stage, it was it was some trap shit. Yeah, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm here for it. But I it's no, I'm. It, it, it was also you know? R and B. Yes. It was also some very backpacker yes. stuff. It was also some very like lyrical yes. miracle type. It yes. was everything. Yes. It's like it, I want to make sure that we hold space for the entirety of the culture and that no one feels like they're left out and no one feels like all I care about personally. For, for you guys as creatives is for you to be your most authentic selves and be received in that fashion. Yeah. And that's why like, we don't promote it based off of celebrities. Right. 
We promote it based I, off of yeah. And I think the like coming into that experience, I was very much like, okay, how I'm gonna sell myself to the people I talk to is I made those beats. And by the time I got off stage, people were like, yo, you could rap. And it was like I needed that. And it helped in so much of what I'm working through right now musically is the, this idea of like, I will get your attention because I don't sound, I sound like myself. Yes. Like, like the, um, the first time I met with Greater Than and we talked about comps, right? And I was like, yeah, people always kind of give me the Kanye comp. And one of the people in the car was, was like, I, I get it. I feel like your comp is more like childish Gambino, you know? Mm. And I was like, mm. Oh, <laughs> I never put two and two together. Right. And I was like, Go listen to some childish real quick. Then I went, Oh yeah. <laughs> like, well, I was I was to bro earlier, but like, but what I what I discovered is in digging into childish's story, like his whole thing was like, people say I'm not black enough, and people say that I'm too, you know, I'm I'm too funny, and all these different things. But watch, I'm gonna go just do my thing. Right. Um, I was a creator, like, oh, I was a funny guy, but like, watch me go write this song with this amazing hook, and so. Like I found myself after Austin really leaning into this idea of like, when you have to say something that only you can say, yes. and when you say that, that's going to be your thing. And so it's not what's hot right now, like, because we just get copies of copies of copies of copies, um, which I just wrote a, a hook for, uh, you know, copies of copies of copies of copies of copies of copies of copies. Hey, like, <laughs> Like we, just, like we, we get it, and I understand it. Like I understand we've got this this space where we've democratized, and you and I talked about this a little bit. We've democratized music creation so much that everybody can download Fruity Loops, and everybody can download, you know, um, you know, Auto Tune by Antares, and they can make something, and you can go into the AI generated, you know, lyrics, and now you've got you could just produce something and put it on YouTube like that, or put it on DistroKid like that, and like I love that that's. A, an option, obviously, because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the reality that I can sign up for a distro kid and I can go on YouTube and download a tight beat. And I, like, and I could buy a microphone off of Amazon. Like, I would not be here if that wasn't available. And also, like, we got to keep making room for the reality that, like, music is art. Like, it is, it is our, our ability to say something that comes from some depth, like, Every person I know has an album or a song that hits them right where they are emotionally or an album that just makes them dance. And like that comes from, that came from Wu-Tang deciding that they were going to say what only they could say. Nelly saying what only he could say. You know, Kendrick saying what only he could say. And so like, I think we have to, I think like making it is creating space for people like me who like are not going to continue to be the type, like I can't do the Travis Scott thing. I can't, I can only be Wayne. And, and being Wayne, what I'm finding is my audience will develop because I'm being real to myself. And, and that's my philosophy. And that's why I say like, just trying to hold that space and, and like, even in our first conversation, like, and, and um, cause I know like, okay, you went to, um, it was Super Bowl weekend. Yep. And it was like, and I was like, and I already knew what that yeah. was. And like, and I can speak, I hadn't been there. I had like, hey, this is what that is. And this is probably what it happened. And this is probably because I've been here and I've been doing this so long and I understand. And I've listened to your music. And that's the funny thing to me is like, it's um, like, if I'm talking to someone, I've listened to their music. Yeah. I couldn't imagine. Imagine talking to someone having not listened to their music. Yeah. Like, like, otherwise, why are we talking? <laughs> yeah. So, but I know this industry is so, it's just a numbers game. So everybody, yo, I love you. Haven't listened to, what's the name of the song? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> so in that, um, I'm, I'm like, just like kind of, kind of understanding like, hmm, that doesn't seem like, like it's the best fit and I'm breaking down why yeah. this, this isn't the best fit and what your expectations probably were versus the reality and why there's that disconnect. But then having to sell the idea of South by Southwest, not just our event, but the idea of 
what goes on in Austin during this time and, and, and why it's going to be beneficial so that, so that you understand and you come in there with the right game plan. And that's one of the things like I always talk to the artists that we have perform, especially people it's their first yeah. time there because people, people hear festival and they think like Coachella and I'm like, no, it's nothing yeah. like that. It's like, it's, it's its own thing. And you have to understand what that thing is in yeah. order to make the most of that thing. Yeah. And so you came down and, and you made the, the most of that thing. Yeah. And, and so like, that's what, like, like I said, with the flyers and just that, those conversations ahead of time so that you were fully prepared and knowing how to maneuver and just having like, Hey, we're going to do this. We got the venue, we got this. So you need to have a video. So go out <laughs> and, 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 and being able to give you the assignment and for you to understand the assignment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like recognizing like what, what space has existed for what reason. So when we had the meet and greet the day before, like my whole mindset was how do I, like who's doing what, mm -hmm. like who does what, but, and so I, every person I, I talked to, I would ask them, like, what do you do and who do people say you sound like? Mm -hmm. Because for me, I know what my production sounds like. And so I know that in having the conversation, there are certain guys like, oh, yeah, this is, you know, this is the, the, you know, the vein that I'm in. And I was like, dope, like, let me hear your music. I know I can't do anything for you except for maybe contribute. Let's get a picture real quick. Let's post it. So maybe there's some folks in my audience who might be able to like, I can't, I can't sell you on some beats or feature because I know that I'm not, we're not in the same vein. Right. But then make this connection on the front end and say, hey, let's figure out if that's the thing that we do. And so like, as much as trust me, folks was up there performing and I was like, these are the Olympics. Like this is, this is for it. And like, I played sports my whole life. What we not going to do is back down. So like, I look, I looked at you like, do I get a microphone? Like, what are we, <laughs> you know? And at the same time, it was like, how do I, how do I work the room and make sure that like, I'm not only doing the interviews, like I wanted, I needed to do the interviews, but I'm also asking everybody and also saying like, yo, you live in Atlanta. Tell me about that. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you live in LA. Tell me about that. Like, do I need to visit there? Do like, if if I were to visit there, how do I get in contact with you? So that way we're just building that network. And so I think that was, that was the mindset is like, how do we use each one of these spaces in order to not just say, like, I'm here to perform. Um, and, like and, that, and that's a big thing for us. That's a huge thing for us is to make it a conducive space for that. So like, like when we did the pandemic with the meet and greets and everything is like, yo, so you're there, you're getting interviews, but at the same time, like when I'm bringing people up on stage, if you'll notice, like I'm interviewing the people on stage so that you, so that I'm exposing touch points where, yeah. oh, he's from, oh, that, oh, okay. And so now you have an entry point to have a conversation, to start a conversation. Right. And so it's like, like for us, it's not about cramming as many people as possible onto stage. How, ma how much money can we get? Right. It's like, right. how can we create? create an event that's um, productive for everybody. Yeah. And so like, that's where like, like that first day you, you came in, I watched how you worked the room. I was like, look at them soft skills. That's that corporate. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny about mm -hmm. that is the hardest thing to do for me mm -hmm. was to pivot from the interview to the performance. Mm -hmm. Because my interview brain is like very, you know, very mindful, very demure, right? Like, it's, <laughs> like, so my interview brain is like corporate. And so I got the microphone and I, I know how to hold the microphone, how to walk back and forth. I know how to interact with you. So all of a sudden it's like, here we go, just Wayne, nine to five. I was like, it took, it took me, it took me, and I, I <laughs> video. No one else besides me notices. It took me the first two bars to hold the microphone the right mm -hmm. way and to start because I had to like, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not presenting anymore, Wayne. You're performing, like, right. which, um, and that that has been something I have like worked on since that moment because I watch films. <laughs> so it was like, like, how do we get better in those moments? Yeah, you gotta watch them game tapes. Them game tapes is everything. <laughs> I, I, I almost don't post the beginning part of that performance <laughs> just because I don't like it. I'm like, 
why are you holding the microphone like you still like you still over there talking like like grab it right <laughs> no that's definitely what's up so like so here's my question for you like having having uh participated in the making a compound and um and being a member on the site like well just on the compound what would you like what what would you tell someone who is interested or on the fence or like thinking about getting involved with it yeah um i would say that it's invaluable um between the connections that i made the confidence that i grew in and then actually being able to take the next step in my artistry because of a connection that I made. Um, like, I, I don't know, I would still be doing what I was doing in January had I not come. And I'm saying that very hyperbolic. I don't know what else other things could have happened, but I do know that I don't, like, I don't have some of the footage that I have. I don't finish nine to five, honestly. I finished that song for the comedy. <laughs> I, I did it like, like it, it put me in a mode of having to do certain things. And so it's sometimes, like I said, as artists, we can kind of sit back in our own world and be like, oh, well, like people should come to me and want to consume what I'm making. But for me, even if you don't perform, had I not performed, being in the room for the pandemic and being in the room for the compound, I met so many people and was able to have conversations that changed the way I thought about content, that changed the way I thought about production, that made me say, hey, when I wrote something and I have this person in mind, so when I get the chance to make that song, I'm gonna reach back out to that person because their voice will be perfect. Like, and I wouldn't have never known Classic if it wasn't for that. I would never known Wes the Wordsmith. And th we push each other without talking to each other. Like, I'm watching them move and I'm sitting back going like, Wes just dropped an EP, and I'm like, I gotta get to work. <laughs> like, that, all of those elements can only happen in community. And that's my big, biggest thing, is the community that I was able to participate in, the connections I was able to make, in addition to, to being able to create a lot of content and being able to perform. Like, so yeah, community, connections, content. Those three Cs, alone or were worth just getting into Austin. And also you realize being in Austin, walking up and down the strip, that people are working. People are grinding. Yeah. Like folks is out there trying to make it. And I'm in a bubble. Like I'm in I'm in Minneapolis, St. Paul. We don't have a huge scene out here. Like if, when you say Minneapolis, people go, oh Prince. Prince been dead for <laughs> like <laughs> You get what I'm saying? The Sounds of Blackness. The Sounds of Blackness was hot in the 90s with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. So our whole, like our whole musical legacy is trapped in two decades ago. Outside of like Javante Patton, who's like gospel music extraordinaire, but like it's trapped. And so when, when I'm in this bubble, I could be like, oh, well, like it's fine. Then I go to Austin and I'm like, oh no, people got camera crews with them at all times. People are out here like making sure that they, they wear and they QR code and they t-shirt. I'm like, I'm not doing enough. And like that, so like all of those different elements as an artist, if you want to go to the next level, if you actually want to see people, if you want to put yourself in a position for people to hear what you're creating, then you have to step outside your comfort zone. And this is the greatest opportunity I have experienced thus far to step outside my comfort zone and actually be in community, create quality content and make amazing connections. And, and, and that's like, for me, one of the, the big things with the membership and um, like with what we do and how we organize it is, like I said, holding that space. Um, sure. And it's for the, the people, the people who invest in themselves move differently. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's really what it is. Yeah. And, 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 and it, it, it puts it, 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 it just more clearly like, for me, like, cause like I said, like I'm always trying to, for the have nots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but realizing, like, like the like the it's all the it's always the club with the free line to get shot up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
It's like there's no when there's no invest, investment into the situation. Yeah. And what's <laughs> funny about that is even like I'm so I have a membership. I'm not as involved. Mm -hmm. and you and I just recently talked about this. Like I'm not as involved as I need to be. Part of that was I had to like get my bearing straight with greater than and figure out all that. Yeah. Um, and so like now that I've kind of got my bearings, because then I'll, every time I'm like, okay, cool, I need to like make sure I'm super invested. Then I like open my phone. It's like, oh, so and so just open for future. So and so just open for yachty. And I'm like, where was that? How did I miss it? <laughs> and so it's not just so I can't just make the one investment. Right? Mm -hmm. I got to invest in myself. But I like that initial investment is putting me in a position where I can take those steps. Yeah. No, nah, that's and that's and that's definitely what like we we want it to be and for like for us what is it um like you said the so many opportunities there are the opportunities that we create like so i have a promoter he has an opportunity he has yo we got a show with 42 doug all right let me send this out to the marketing clients and see if anyone wants it and it's like all right and then we'll do one for the members and post it up for people to submit and so those are opportunities that we create but then there are so many opportunities that we just facilitate yeah i just holding this space so it's the event where okay you come down here but because you came down here then you meet these people from this distribution company and you get these several interviews and you connect with this dj who then plays you on their fm radio show yeah. and then yeah. they, like yeah. all of these things that we don't we don't directly create like it would and that's one of the most difficult things for me when people ask about the membership, like, uh, what is it? I was like, we just help. Like, and like, and that's nothing that nobody wants to hear when they're yeah, spending their money. <laughs> right. It, it's creating the environment for something to happen. Yeah. Uh, like you can't, it, it's like, um, it's like go, going to the gym and saying like, okay, if with this gym membership, are y'all going to guarantee that I'm going to like lose weight or, or become buff? Like, no, like right. you got to actually show up. Like sometimes you got to watch the other people in the gym and just copy what they do. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I know Planet Fitness, they just, they will put it on the thing. Like you need to do these seven things. Right. But sometimes I think that it's really easy to, to walk into the gym and say like, what are y'all going to do for me? Like, we're going to create the environment for you to grow. We're going to create right. for you to become more healthy. And so that's kind of how I look at it. It's like, you all have created the environment for me to be able to take some next steps and taking advantage of that and striking in the right moments is necessary. And also like, I can't look at the next guy and be like, well, why is he, well, he, he was in the right place at the right time. He made the move when he needed to make it. Okay. Now I need to work. I need to submit for the next thing. Right. I might need to up my membership or, and here's a wild part. It's like, you're super available. If it's like, I need some feedback. Yeah. Like, like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, and, and also the community is available for that feedback. Hey, y'all. And so like just being able to just to see it as a catalyst for the type of transition that's necessary. Yeah. And so, all right. So you signed a distribution deal yeah. with greater than distribution. Um, you got, got a new single coming. Yes. Was it uh, October 11th? October 11th. Yes. The name of the record is Attention. Attention, yes. I, I saw your posts <laughs> a little <laughs> earlier today. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, tell us a little bit about this record. Yeah, so the, the whole idea, so I was supposed to be working on a t completely different record. Okay. And I kept workshopping it. I, I workshopped it with you. We listened to it. I just couldn't get it to land where I wanted it to. And Oh, I remember that. Yeah. I, okay. I couldn't, and so I... Um, at the same time, I was kind of, I've been going viral on TikTok a lot for non-music related things. Well, technically, I went viral for a while for the Drake and Kendrick beef. And then there was some politics stuff that came up. So I was constantly talking, but it wasn't me talking about my music and I was frustrated. But I realized I've been doing that for a very long time. And so um, in kind of a moment of self-reflection, I realized how long I have been garnering people's attention. And I kind of, I shut everything down one day, like put my phone away and just started working on some different concepts. Musically, I like let that build out. And when I got to building the hook, I just kept coming back to this concept. Can I have your attention, please? Everybody just look at me. And the whole song just really outlines for me, 
my own internal struggle with how much I care about people's attention. Like, how, like I need it. There's something about it that just does it for me. While at mm -hmm. the same time, I'm like, that's probably not a good thing. And so I'm like grappling with that. Um, and I've workshopped at a bunch of different places. It's played well. And so it's just been a really, really good kind of next step. And as I'm trying to build out an album, it fits really perfectly in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And so that that's an interesting concept that I think a lot of creatives can relate to, yeah. <laughs> whether whether or not they want to admit. <laughs> like, so, um, but no, like, I know that, um, like, even as you say that, like, for me, um, it's this space that we're in is interesting because artists are brands now more than ever. Yeah. And as much as music it is art, but then it is also content. Yeah. And it's, it's like, I would, I like a, a simple way that I would describe it, my, like when in having this discussion, the difference between sex and making love is intention and feeling. Yeah. 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 But making love is still sex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, while it is art, it's content. For sure. And, and then this fast paced environment of content, we don't get enough time with it as, as, we, as we once did. Yeah. So, so it's like, so it's a, it's a recency bias and it's, a, it's a, a thing of constantly producing something new because our consumption patterns have been changed yeah. where we're, we're at, we're at the buffet. So yeah. there's a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. It's like, I want to taste everything versus, huh, I just want a nice steak. I think there's an element for me where I know that I've been a part of changing that environment because of how frequently I've been on tick, or I've been on social media, mm -hmm. you know, since all the way back to MySpace and Black Planet and then the early stages of Facebook and the early stages of Twitter, like I've always been an early adopter. And like in 2020, I blew up on TikTok and I have over 300,000 followers. And so for me, I understand my role in that. And it was a reflective moment to be like, I've, I've been searching for how to be creative through those spaces and that doesn't actually do it. But at the mm -hmm. same time, there's something I love when I open up TikTok and I see a little 99 plus at the bottom. And so on TikTok, I've got this duality where I'm trying to do rap promos between my speeches. Right. Um, it's like, and those are the ones that I'm getting 25, 30, 35,000 views on, right? And then when I do a rap promo, it's not. And so I've been trying to figure out how do I, like, oh, we're talking about, you know, uh, something about, so for example, um, I've been labeled a Drake hater. I've been labeled Drake hater number one. Cool. It, it is what it is. And so somebody popped in and they were like, you just hate Drake so much. And I said, well, you think I hate Drake. But what you don't know is last year on my album, Midsummer, I wrote a song called Intervention. And in Intervention, I wrote it to sound like Drake. Here it is. And I did it. And the guy who made the original comment was like, I respect how you flip that. Mm -hmm. Right? And so <laughs> because I have been Drake so much, the algorithm pushed it. Right. And so he all of a sudden has 10,000 views where had I just been like, Here's my song intervention it might have gotten a couple hundred maybe a thousand and so i'm trying to figure out on that end and then on instagram i just wiped it like i just i literally started fresh on my instagram the promo the song um which was a weird experience to go through like eight years worth of well i shouldn't say no is it eight years now yeah maybe eight years worth of instagram content like that was a wild experience to just archive things and delete things because everything that I'm going to post on Instagram is going to be around the idea of attention. Like right. here are many, many ways I garner attention. Being at a chance the rapper concert when the DJ plays an NSYNC song and I decide to get up and start dancing, that's a way I've garnered attention. Like being a dad on vacation mode, right? But taking a picture that looks artistic, it's a way I garner attention. And so like there's, there has to be an intentionality. There's going to be an intentionality around the way I do Instagram to continue continue to push that attention while at the same time recognizing I have people's attention on TikTok and I got to find a ways to like navigate that accordingly. And I try to express that in the song. 
And 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 I think that's that's one of the the interesting things with social media. It's that that the frustration of that in your face to know that the power that it has yeah. and how close you can be to a thing. It's like like and I, and this is so so with our platform um, on the website, the making it platform is set up because of kind of the thing with Instagram. So you post, I, th I think so many artists and I, the way I would describe it, like our platform and why I'm so adamant about you guys posting your updates is because our platform ha doesn't have billions of followers, mm -hmm. the billions of users. It's nowhere near. We got over 80,000 registered users, right? Mm -hmm. um, but they're all in this space. There are artists and creatives right. and producers and DJs and stuff like that. And so you're not gonna reach nowhere near as many people on Instagram, but you're going to reach them in a context. Yeah. And so the way that I will always describe it is like, hey, you're at the little hookah lounge and it's your sister's birthday or your cousin's birthday and the cake comes out and singing happy birthday and someone runs up to you like, just wait, mm -hmm. hey, I got some beats for you. And it's like mid happy birthday candles on like, my man, what's yeah. going on? <laughs> yeah. You're not going to be receptive to it in right. that moment because you're, you're out celebrating and this is a social event and occasion. Yeah. And, but you could be at that same hookah lounge on that same night, same songs playing and people there, but it's a industry mixer or yeah. networking event or some performance, a beat battle. And someone comes up to you and your reception is completely yeah, for different. Sure. For sure. And, and so that's, that's the thing with social media. Yeah. People are on there to socialize, to be entertained, to be, and new music isn't entertaining to most people. Right. Especially if you can't <laughs> figure out what the connecting point is. Yeah. Like, I know that my niche on TikTok is me. And right. People are like, we, we like your personality, the way you do things. And so I can't just post music. Right. I have to post myself. I have to do all of the, you know, hey, y'all, listen. That's you that's are the hook. hook. You're I, the worm. All those things. <laughs> and check this out. And hope that I've hooked them in with my quirkiness, so, which is important then because I can't have now my music not reflect my personality. Yes. So the two have to be intrinsically tied. And so that also now goes into how I create. But like, if I'm not doing that, it's not going to work. And so, yeah, I, I think I, I bought an ad one time for like on Instagram for one of my songs. And I just, as an experiment, I wanted to see, I wanted to track metrics. And I looked at all these different artists who are about my size in like streams and things like that to figure out, or maybe the step up. I created a whole spreadsheet and it was like, here's who's in my bracket, here's in, who's in the 10,000 something bracket, you know, and who's running ads, what ads are they running? Of course, and Instagram was like, you like rap ads? And it was just like, <laughs> you know, here. <laughs> but what I discovered is that there was no, there was no hook. There was nothing about it. And it made me question my own music and be like, yo, what about my content would make someone want to invest outside of we're cool? Like we're good friends, so I'm gonna and even then your friends aren't always gonna hit like. Yeah. Right? They rarely share. And so how do I create how do I figure out and this is part of why I posted the picture that I posted, why I posted the reel that I posted. And those are the only two things on my Instagram right now is I know that nostalgia is a big deal. So I know that people are going to like that NSYNC video, right? I know, hey, it's the last weekend before school starts up here. I know y'all down there in Georgia been in school for a few weeks, right? People are like, oh my God, I thought this was an ad for a resort, right? People like the aesthetic. And so and then I go, hey, do I have your attention? Like I... I have to figure out what is happening here that people want that I can then give to them and then be like, there you go. And also, <laughs> yes. Um, and so doing, uh, deciding to do rap promos 
between my TED Talks on TikTok is necessary because people are there. They'll go, oh, I'm always here for Wayne's TED Talks. Cool. How do I now be like, let me hook you in? So mm -hmm. then when I post, hey, join this email distribution list, they trust me. They know that I'm a trustworthy source and voice. And they know, and I've said, hey, are you a fan of these types of artists? Okay, then you should check out these songs. And I always tell people, go to my playlist, listen to those songs, come back. And if you're like, I love you, Wayne, I don't love that, you are still welcome here because this is not a music exclusive page. But also what I found is that people go, oh my gosh, I didn't know you made music. And mm -hmm. now as I'm the hook, I've, I've hooked them in with what TikTok wants to show them. Right. I can now pull them in and say, the music is a part of that quirkiness because I'm always breaking out in song in my videos anyway, right? Like all of those things work together in order to accomplish that bigger goal. And, and that's, and that's the, the thing is the context. Like every platform has its context. And so that is the, the frustration I think I see a lot of people have is because like they'll post their music or they'll post repost the podcast or some relationship stuff, the gender wars and oh, everybody's on the comment and a hundred likes, 200 likes. Yeah. And then they post their, their song or their artwork or something and 13 likes, two comments. It's a free game for everybody out there on that. So if you repost a, you know, Ray Daniels talking about the gender stuff, right? Mm -hmm. you, people are in there going crazy and you added a little context to it and you see that people are going crazy in the comments, pick a comment, write a verse. Mm -hmm. Write a verse about that comment and go, this is such an interesting comment because da, 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 da. And the better way to put it is you go right into your verse. And so now you've built a layer of content. So when people see that video, they're gonna see that there was a comment. And when people said there was a comment that you're responding to, in their brains, they're thinking that there was engagement on the other video. Well, now I have to see what the other video was. So now mm -hmm. you have two views off of one piece of content and also you've just dis you've displayed your musicality and so people can now associate your voice with your musicality but wayne it wasn't my song that i'm trying to promote do that for a couple weeks like do that for several weeks where you don't promote any of your actual music garner a fan base around people liking the way that you flip this and use some free beat that you find somewhere and do that right it also is a great way to sharpen your pen right and so now you're developing a group of people who are now can associate your voice with your opinions that they agree with so and when a person agrees with your opinions they are more likely to have bias towards the other things that you do so now you've created the environment so that when you go y'all i want you to take this thing out Instagram will push it because Instagram is used to pushing you rapping or singing and your fan base will eat it up because they are used to you having that type of behavior. And so whenever, if there's, you have to recognize the context to your point, like what is happening? What are the things that are garnering attention? And sometimes you just have to let people organically find your link in bio because they like you as opposed to it being everything's a promo. Kev on stage is a master class at this, mm -hmm. by the way, like Kev on stage, talks about everything under the sun. And he, if you get to the end of his video, you'd be like, if you thought that joke was funny, you should come see me at X, Y, and Z. So he's always talking about what's trending, while also pulling you back into and promoing the things that he's trying to accomplish. Yeah. yeah. No, and that and that's the, the, the thing of being able to see the code, the sake of like the matrix, just seeing the code, and then you can work it. Yeah. And like, like, but you see the code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did a spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> the average artist ain't doing a spreadsheet. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I made that spreadsheet and I started listening to the folks and I was so mad, mm -hmm. right? Like I am deep down really envious. Like I, mm -hmm. I feel like my music should be listened to more than it is. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not unique in that. And so I'm listening to folks and I'm being like, Y'all, y'all listening to this and I'm out here existing? What are they doing? Yeah. What are they doing? How are they able to do that? Now, there's obviously, there's the people who pay money for bots. A great way mm -hmm. to tell is, you know, if every comment is three fire emojis, right? Like yeah. those actually have a hundred thousand or a million followers. 
like, and I'm not talking about them folks, like people who are actually on the ground who you don't, you've never heard them on the radio. Yeah. That's the other part. There are cats that you've never, never heard on the radio who are in Europe touring right now, mm -hmm. living their dream. Those are the folks I wanted to figure out and be like, all right, what are you doing? Because I might not be, I might not be Yachty, I might not be Kendrick, I might not be Drake, but I can make a living doing yeah. this. Yeah. Who's doing doing that? All right, and then listening, being like, okay, there's definitely some, there's definitely some things that need to happen in order for me to get to that point. I need to see something bigger in order to get there. And and that's the like for me, that's the key to the the things that we do. Um, and, and so like even going back to like our platform versus like the Instagrams and the TikToks and the Twitters and stuff is like as a creative, as an artist you create a lot of different content and like right. all of this content exists in the realms or dimensions that are conducive for that content. So you drop a new song, it's on Spotify. You go out and perform, you post a clip on Instagram, you are doing some kind of creative skit type thing. It's on TikTok. Yeah, It's like all of these different things exist in all of these different realms and there's not one place for the whole. And so that's what the, your profile on our page is for, is for you to take the outliers on all of your different platforms. That's why when you're posting your update, the first thing it asks you for is the link. Yeah. So, okay, you drop the music video on YouTube, boom. Now sell people on why they should click this link. Yeah. Give them a picture, give them a headline, a hook, yeah. Yeah. and then give them the descriptions to click, okay. You had a performance over here and you got some good performance footage and all right, that's another post. And then it's like the stuff that you, the song that you just dropped on Spotify. So now when I come to your profile on our site, I'm in the context of I'm an artist or I'm a producer. Yeah. I'm someone I want to see what you have going on. I don't care about your TED talk. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care about the birthday yeah. party or none of this other stuff. Cause I'm on here trying to find someone to send some beats to or someone to collaborate with. And so that stuff, while it's entertaining in a social sense, mm -hmm. it doesn't help me find the person that I need on the professional side. Yeah. But when I come to your profile and I see, Oh, this, this, okay. Just signed a distribution deal. Oh, he was down to South by Southwest. Oh, he's about to release this. And it's like, Oh, he's working. And I see all of this happened in the past six months. And so like, that's the, the intent. So like when you're posting your updates every month on the platform, your profile is effectively a living EPK right. that you update right. every month with the thing that you're proud of that you did. So even with your TikTok, even with the Ted talks, when you, when now it's, it's not even about the topic, it's about the traction. So, so now you have an update like over 300,000 or just hit 300,000 followers on uh, TikTok off of this series, da, 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 da. This is the top um, TikTok yeah. that in his collection. Yeah. And this just hit this milestone. And so now it's like, oh, and he's got, and that justifies your feature price. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So that's, that's, the, that's the method behind the madness. <laughs> and I think, you know, the the overarching thing I'm figuring out in all of this is it takes work, right? Like, you know, one of the things that we talk about on my team all the time is the idea of like not trying to hit the lottery. That, you know, um, posting a song and it going viral is hitting the lottery. Mm -hmm. And that's not- That's most people's marketing plan. That's not realistic, you know, um, because like even um, Russell, um, not low Russell, but uh, Russ. Russell, no, not Russ, the dude who do boofing. Yeah, my little boofing. Okay. I don't give a okay. okay, okay. Even that, like, I don't know how prepared he was for that song to go viral. Like, it, it went viral, and I remember being like, I said, he's either already signed or he's about to be signed. Mm -hmm. And then he, the next, next TikTok, he was like, he's like, guys, we got to get this sample cleared so we can get the song. And I was like, oh, he was already with RCA. Mm. So, so then I, then I, my, my little spidey senses be like, how 
much did y'all pay to in ad revenue? <laughs> Listen, and this is so when you when you understand this stuff and know this stuff, it's like everything gets paid for. It's like they're even even the organic, like this is the thing I say when we have this conversation and artists, I think artists, a lot of times artists think that organic is a synonym for free. Yeah. But it's like you must not have been to the grocery store. That organic stuff costs more. <laughs> and the, and the, you're like the idea of like Gary Vee talks about this, you day trade attention. Yeah. Right. And so like the idea of like the amount of content you actually have to put out in order to have organic reach is absurd. Yes. And so like there there is a point when I when my TikTok blew up the most is I was posting over four times a day. This past May, uh, when the Kendrick and Drake beef hit its peak. I was posting updates 10 to 12 times a day. Like, first of all, I don't know how I pulled that off. I don't know how I pulled it off being a dad. I'm asking myself, I'm like, what was you doing? <laughs> Bro, I was sitting here, I get off a meeting, I look, oh, Drake just dropped. Let me listen to it real quick. Let me post a response. Like, it was it was like that. I would hit post, I go back to another meeting. Like, I didn't sleep for the, <laughs> like, I was like, I'm done after that. I was tapped. Yeah. But the, how, the first video I made about it went viral because I was like, this isn't, y'all are talking about this in a way that doesn't make sense for me as an artist. And right. so that viral, and then we're just kind of growing from there. And so like, but it took, I couldn't just be like, hey, I posted my one little update every other day and expect, like organic reach costs time, energy, money, efforts. Yeah. Study, you have to study and know who you're trying to reach, why you're trying to reach them. It, put, it takes as much research as it takes to run an ad run truly organic content it takes that much research because if you're making organic fruit you need to know the soil you need to know the ph you need to know yeah. what chemicals you can and cannot use like it takes all of that effort and so like that's that's uh, something i've had to get my head around. and it yields less yeah. that's why it's more expensive yes. <laughs> <laughs> like in tiktok and instagram because, like do you want to boost this for ten dollars no oh my god i hate them like, I so hate them. Like, it's like, it's, it's like I, this is my thing. I said, we're all digital sharecroppers. Yeah. It's like, we're working on other people's land, on other people's, because you don't even own it. Like, oh. that, was the, that was the thing, like, last year. Like, like, this has been one of the toughest years for me. The past 18 months has been the toughest for me because um, we lost our main Instagram account. Mm. And so, like, it was, like, close to 100,000 followers. And so... And so we were in the middle of a rebrand, a redesign on the website. We had switched the whole business model up to leverage that account in a specific way. And we were doing that. We were separating the industry news that we were following from the independent stuff that we were doing and lost all that. And, and it was like, everybody's like, oh, you lost all those followers. And it was like, yeah, but the more important is lost all that content. Yeah. And it's like, it's like people who are no longer here, like artists that we flew in, did stuff and have passed. It's like events and things that we've done that don't exist, venues and events that don't exist anymore. Like all of that footage and all of these things that we've done for people. And I was like, I was going through a hard drive last night and I found stuff like, oh man, I forgot about yeah. this. Like that type of stuff. And it's like, it, it, it definitely has had a financial effect. Sure. But it's like, but then there's also that other component of it, of a huge chunk of like 14 years yeah. of our, 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 our story. Yeah. Like, like the visual side of it and all these things, yeah. like gone. And it's like, and they got the nerve to be like, would you like to boost this post? <laughs> I'd like you y'all to go, go back and find my old stuff. <laughs> and I think that's the, like one of the things that I, I try to keep in mind in as a part of the whole creative, creative process is like the music I make is mine. Like that, that's mine. It belongs to me. Everything else I'm doing is I'm trying, I'm operating in a capitalistic society. So like 
I can have my, I can make up, I have hundreds of beats and songs on my computer right now that will probably never see a lot of day. And they're not making me any money and they're technically not losing me any money. But as soon as we get on here, as soon as we start dealing with Spotify, as soon as we start dealing with distribution, as soon as we start dealing with social media, as soon as we start dealing with performance, because I got to drive to get to the, like everything else costs. Right. And so I'm, I'm operating in this plane and recognizing like, I can't be so hung up on wanting it to just work. And, I, and if I'm honest, that was my hang up. Right. Like, why won't it just happen? <laughs> Because it so there's this, this um, the podcast, the Artists of Shitty People podcast. The first, I want to say it was like the first or second episode. Um, I think talking about the difference between possibility and probability. Hmm. And I th think those are like, I'm very big on language because it's these small syntactic hangups mm -hmm. that create so much turmoil. And I think a lot of a lot of people misrepresents possibility as probability in the music industry. And it's like, anything is technically possible. Right. Like, like all of the atoms to create an iPhone could arrange themselves in a million billion years right. Right. to create an iPhone. Right. <laughs> but it's like, but the probability of that happening is very low. Yeah. And so it, it's like, those type of things but when we just like yo it's possible and it's like, like but it's not probable yeah and so people chase after the possible without respect to the math of the possibility yeah and that that's what i try to get artists to say like i really i i i my in my heart i love working with artists and i only want to work with artists I don't want to work with people who see the music as a hustle, a way to get out of another thing. Yeah. I want to work, work with people who like, like I want to work with someone who will do music, even if they know it would never blow up or ever do him, they're still going to make music Yeah, because it's a part of who they are. It's, it's them. It's a thing that they do. Like my grandmother didn't need to open a bakery to make peach cobbler. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, that's my thing for artists and creative is I want you guys to have a healthy relationship with your yeah. art. And I think yeah. this capitalistic society makes you feel like if it's not making you any money, then what are you doing? Like, and that is wholly wrong yeah. because like, I was just having the conversation with someone a little earlier. It's like, yo, people go to Vegas all the time, knowing how much money they're going to lose. They've a, apportioned and budgeted to lose I, i'm only like two thousand dollars my max so you went knowing that you were going to lose <laughs> but to have a good time doing it what is wrong with an artist taking two thousand dollars and spending it on their music yeah having a good time doing a thing that ultimately you leave with nothing from the blackjack yeah. table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At least you have a link to your song or the video. <laughs> yeah. And I think that the the idea of that too, like I came back from, like I came back from Austin and was like, okay. Cause people were like, oh, you know, what, 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 you know, programming are you using? And I was like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna keep it a sec. I did that in GarageBand. And they were like, <laughs> and I was like, I, right, I, my work with what I got. My keyboard was a gift. My microphone was a gift. I garage band came with the computer, right? And so I got back and I was like, okay, we can't do that no more. Like, like we had to I upgraded to, to Logic. I went and got a new microphone. I went and got a new keyboard. I went and got a new um, you know, beat pad. And so it was like, we actually have to, if we're gonna do this, we gotta do this, we gotta do this, we gotta do this. So that way, like my thing is I don't ever want and as soon as I did that, I could hear the yeah. difference. And I was mad. Cause I was like, the whole time, I've been sitting here the whole time. What like, is the plugin? <laughs> what is the plugin? How do I EQ this? <laughs> and then be like, who, who do I need to outsource to, to like make this thing work? And, and then, the, then like getting in the rooms with, you know, people and like, and I've had some, I've worked with some, some dope engineers, but getting in the rooms with some people and they're like, oh yeah. And then they're just doing the thing I would have done on my own. And I'm like, you know what? I didn't need to pay you $250 for you to, like 
hit a, a stock plug in. Yeah. <laughs> Sound <laughs> good, Iser. <laughs> like, come on. And so I just think the the reality of how like it plays in the investment is not for me. The investment is not in I want to make money. Let's be clear. Yeah. I, like I got grandparents, I got my parents that that are doing well, and I but they've done so much for me. Like I would love to give back to them as they're aging. I've got kids that want to be in sports. I want to not be sitting here going, okay, you carry the one. Like I, like I want to feel comfortable. Yes. Um, and yet for me, the investments that I'm making right now are for me to be able to actually create art at the level that it's in my brain. Mm-hmm. One of my big, biggest frustrations as a pastor, uh, when I was pastoring is I had these dope ideas. Right. One year for, for Easter, I was like, here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I was like, we're going to do, we're going to project this scene from the Passion of the Christ onto, we're going to, like, all lights down. Boom. We're going we're gonna, to, you know, project this scene right as Jesus is dying in the ground, you know, splits open. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get, we're going to rent some LEDs and they're going to go yellow. And then the, the band's going to come out, boom, and hit this song, right? And everybody was looking at me like I was crazy for two reasons. One, they're like, I don't know if we have the talent for that. I don't know if we have the budget for that. And like, that was really frustrating for me to be like, I have these dope ideas and I want to be able to do them. And so I am looking at like every, like I want to, I want to make money to invest it back in my ability to make the type of art that's been living in my soul since I was 14. And because I watched concerts. I remember watching, you know, a Michael Jackson's Bad album concert and being like, oh, that's why everybody does what they do. Like, and then I've always had that mindset of how do I create those moments? I want to be able to make those moments. I want to be able to make the sounds I want to make. I want to create the worlds and the albums that I want to create. And I can't do that if I'm not being able to put something into it. So I'm willing to put what I need into it to get that level and, of creative economy. And so that's my thing is, so for me, the goal for me when I work with artists is to make um, music neutral, mm-hmm. like break even. How does it pay for it? How can you get it to pay? Sometimes we'd be like, ah, I'm trying to make a million dollars. Like, bro, you're losing money yeah. right now. And like everything <laughs> is yeah. an investment. So like, let's figure out how to like, maybe not lose so much money or let's figure out how to make it break even and do the thing because, and that's the thing for me in the art, like, like why I'm, I'm so pro artist that sometimes it sounds like I'm (laughs) anti-artist because it's like, I'm not going to allow you guys to gaslight yourself. Like when artists be like, I'm slaving here making these, like, no, no, sir. (laughs) You're not slaving (laughs) on the keyboard. (laughs) Come on now. (laughs) So the other part of it is like you, for for me, this is personal, local, immediate. Like if you get to the spot where it feels like you're slaving, then you need to reevaluate. Because when I hit that moment of inspiration, I'm like, yes, like I'm putting stuff together constantly. But then when like, all of a sudden, I had the I, I was, I was making dinner and went, what if we did this in B minor, and like ran downstairs and started playing this piano part, like, and it was like, there it is. So then I had to run back upstairs, turn the stove off, sprint back downstairs. So I was like, I got a window, I got to hit, I got to get this, you know, this chord progression out before it's like that wasn't that it was work Mm -hmm. like ultimately i ended up spending an hour putting all these concepts together but it was like that i get to do no you just gave me something like i look it up like labor versus work yeah yeah like it's labor yeah like but it's i i got like i get to do that yeah out of that like it's 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 like presenting like for mm-hmm. me in my job i do a, i do a lot of trainings and i haven't been able to do any train i haven't done a training since march until this past week 
So I was like, all right, here we go. And went into the training and about five minutes in, I was like, oh, this is my sweet spot. Oh, that's good right here, right? Like now it's work. I had to do, you know, all these trainings throughout the week for all these new employees. So it's, it's tech, I'm ta- right. like, I'm tasked doing it, but I'm getting done like, all right, hey, that felt good. Like, like guys who, like LeBron is not sitting back being like, man, I gotta go. Like LeBron's coming, like, like he's, a, he's enjoying himself even though he's working hard. Yes. And so like, for me, that's how I see it is, you know, I just, three years ago, I wasn't doing this. Mm-hmm. Two years ago, I wasn't making beats. I was looking up tight beats on YouTube because I didn't think I could make beats. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, oh, I can play the piano, but I can't make no beats. I can play the drums, I can't make beats. And so for me, every time I get to, I'm like, you mean I get to put a chord progression together and a dope bridge and then put some drums up? Let's go. Like, I get to find the 808 that works? Come on. <laughs> And I think like, and that goes back to like when you, when you left um, Austin and the event and having that experience, that's one of the big things, like <clears throat> why my view of music is the way that it is, is because my view of music in this industry has to encompass everybody. And, and I, and I think it took me a while to get here. Like, and it's like, because it, it it wasn't like that at the beginning for me when I started the magazine. It was like, oh, you're just doing it as a hobby. And it's like, no, everyone should start as a hobby. It's, if that's where everybody starts. Like, like I wouldn't smack a basketball out of a child's hand. You're not serious about going to the NBA. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's what we do with music. Yeah. And so we don't handle people properly in this creative space. And so for me, um, like my, my artist journey is like, everyone starts off as a hobby. It's 90% of people are doing it as a hobby. 9% are serious, 1% are professionals. And so it's like that hobbyist spins as an expense because they don't yet believe. So they, they, they spend in a way that's safe because they know that as much as they would like it to come back, it's not. Mm-hmm. That's how they feel. Yeah. And, and so it's like, so it's for, for me, and that's why I try to hold space and I've incorporated that space more into what we do and people in that part of their journey, because that's 90% of the people is to create places. That's why I like with the opportunity, submit your music, it, you know, yeah. like submit for the music review, submit for this thing, like for you to get that opportunity for you to get good feedback and see the flame emojis come up in the review or for you to get picked for that show. And this thing that is a hobby to you or this thing that you're passionate about and you wish it was this thing, but you really don't believe in it like that. And you're not sure you can have have outside forces reaffirm the dopeness that you felt within that allow, allow you to say, all right, I'm about to get this new key keyboard or now I'm about to do this thing or now I'm about to start running these ads or now I'm about to do these things and take it seriously and move from that 90% into the 9%. And then it's like, like that's when you start investing and you start spending in a way that is more in alignment with how serious you take it and how you feel about the probability of the money coming back and you being able to make something out of it and it not just being possibly a passing yeah. fancy yeah yeah and like i think that transition from hobby to serious is scary and i keep coming back to that that, that phraseology because it's like you actually have to believe in yourself um and it's not, not like I, okay, I'll, I can't speak for anybody else. So I'll speak for myself because I'm my biggest critic because I'm afraid that if I put something out, that's not good. Like, I want to know it's not good before you tell me it's not good. And so, so and I've put some stuff out that wasn't good, <laughs> you know? And so, you know, the, I had a, I had a producer one time, I asked permission to use his beat. 
and he was like sure you can use it for like promos and stuff for like we're not looking to sell it yet i was like cool and so i made a little song called summertime and you know and i dropped it um like exclusively like on soundcloud and i, I think i like uploaded it to through district hit to like instagram and that was the mistake i shouldn't have done that mm -hmm. because by doing that it caused like a copyright strike and the guy emailed he's like this isn't the song that we want for this beat and i felt offended <laughs> You got the nerve. <laughs> At that point, I had only been like making music, making music for like six months or so. But like, how you gonna tell me, right? Um, and then I sat down and really listened to the song. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I wouldn't want this to be the song either. So I pulled it from, from Instagram. My kids are still mad about this to this day because they're on the song. But my big hurdle was, if I'm gonna be serious about this, I need to to like hone in at a level that like when I put something out, it's because I put the time, energy and effort behind it and know the right audience for it. So I can get the type of feedback I need to be able to move it forward. Like, like it, for me, it was so scary. It's like, it's like standing in front of a room full of people, like completely vulnerable. Yeah. Here's everything. Thing. like I'm taking my mask off this is what I actually look like are you okay okay with that and then, then there's the I got bills 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 like I'm B plus three and I got four kids like like I'm like so that that duality of like here's the vulnerability because I'm doing something different and also here's the reality here's the financial reality that if I fail yeah then like I'm 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 not playing with house money anymore it's not Oh, I downloaded this thing. Oh, I bought this beat for forty dollars. It's like, yeah. like if I fail, that's thousands of dollars that somebody needs some new shoes. Somebody's got an AAU tournament, and so like taking those two things and saying, "Okay, cool, I'm gonna go for this," was scary, and it still is scary. And then sometimes like I'm like, I I can't believe I'm in this space right here, pre-professional almost to say like, all right. And I knew I was, I knew I was hitting on all cylinders when my best friend, who was my biggest hater, <laughs> like you, you know, what I'm saying? Yeah. like, like you gotta have every crew's got that one dude who's like, that your outfit looks stupid though. Like that's him. <laughs> yeah, I already know. <laughs> when he started sending me Instagram reels about like, keep going, mm -hmm. you got this, right? And I like played the song for him, and he was like, nobody else but you could do that, and that's a dope way, like. When he got to that point, it's early on, he was like, you can't rap. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, I knew I was heading in the right direction because I could trust that. I'm wearing you down. <laughs> that, like, I, listen, I'm on my way. I, I don't know it. So, like, all of those different steps had to come into play. And then for me, once I was like willing to put myself out there, yeah. willing to take steps. And like I said, went to Vegas and was like, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, am I, is this it? But like, people were coming up to me after my performance and being like, yo, your beats are dope. Mm -hmm. Like, who's your producer? And I was like, me. Like, like I made all those beats. So then, so now I'm getting DM'd about my beats and I'm like, okay, maybe I can't, maybe I can't, maybe I can't write, maybe I'm not good enough mm -hmm. to, but I'm still gonna put myself out there and go to this and I'm put myself out there and invest in, you know, this brunch and invest in going to South by Southwest and pay for these plane tickets and like, and then to come out of that space and I have a distribution deal. That's, that's what I'm saying is like, that step is scary, but it was only because I took that step, invested that money, put myself out there vulnerably that I was able to be in position to start moving towards that professional space. Yeah. No, I think that's like the perfect space to end this. It's like, yeah. <laughs> cause like that's, that's the journey. And it's like to be able to see it, that progression where like you're, you're from a hobbyist mm -hmm. to, to in that space where there's like, where you're flirting with doing it seriously. And I think that's when we, when we connected and uh, like our, first initial conversation on the phone. I was like, I listened to the music and then you send me this stuff. I'm like, oh, this, 
this is very big. Like, <laughs> it's like, and so I was like, all right, let's get on the phone. And yeah. so it's like that, that type of thing and to be able to, to hold that space and, and be a part of that story and that journey for you to take that leap. Yeah. And, and to clear it and make it to the other side. Yeah. And so like, um, just definitely um, congratulations on all of the, the growth and the progress in your journey on landing the distribution deal and finding that confidence and finding your sound and finding your voice and finding a way to authentically integrate your music into your personality and vice versa. Sure. And then being able to share it on these platforms in a way that it 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 gains traction and it's getting seen because that's a thing that a lot of people struggle yeah. with and so yeah. i want to just like really shine a light on those things because yeah. as creatives and chasing this journey sometimes we be so caught up on looking forward and a million streams of grammys and these things that are all the way down the road and that we're looking toward that we fail to stop and take stock in the the mile markers that we've passed along the way. And that's what our whole thing with posting your updates every month is just a reminder to yourself that, yo, I, I did more this month than last month. Yeah. I did something new. Yeah. And and congratulations on all that, bro. I, I really appreciate it. I Like I said, and I'll continue to say, you know, having the opportunity to be in that space made all the difference. And so I'm just so grateful for you and the environment and the community that you're that you're forging because that was the catalyst for me and i'm i know it'd be the catalyst for more people all right um let the people know like where they can find you and and all that good yes. stuff so just wayne dot creative on instagram and just wayne creative on tiktok uh you type in just wayne another either space i'll pop up um and yeah like i said a uh, new song coming out attention october 11th and so you'll i will be getting your attention between now and then with that song i promise you that <laughs> sounds good sounds good we appreciate you tapping in with us one more time just playing creative <laughs>